Board meeting of the Corville City Council to order November 27th, 2018. Roll call, please. Councilmember Foster. Present. Gross. Here. Gill. Present. Dodds. Present. Goodrich. Here. Okay, all council members are present, as is the mayor and city clerk, city administrator, city legal staff, and several city staff members in the audience. I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Gill, seconded by Goodrich. All in favor say aye. 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 Very good. Okay, item four is citizen comments, and we have a lot of citizens in the room tonight, so we may have uh, some comments. So I would welcome anyone that would like to speak to an item that's not already on the agenda to stand up and introduce yourself, and please sign in for the city clerk, and you can have up to five minutes or so to, to tell us, to talk to us. Hello, my name is Royce Ann Porter and I'm a resident of Johnson County for almost 30 years. I'm running for Johnson County Board of Supervisors because I believe in the work that is already being done and, <coughs> excuse me, in Johnson County on important issues like the fight for social justice, a living wage, and affordable housing. I'm the person to help our county with these and other important issues, I am the person to work with all the cities, towns, and rural parts of Johnson County. My current position right now is a union organizer for the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. I am a community activist and a passionate fighter for social justice for over 20 years. In this historic election of diversity and inclusion, we will move toward accomplishing many things, including better communication between the county, cities, and townships. Continuing to work with Coralville on important projects which will benefit not just Coralville, but all of Johnson County. And looking forward to opportunities to listen to you to find new ways we can keep our home healthy and a place and opportunity for all. I am Roy Sam Porter, and I humbly ask for your vote on or before December the 18th, 2000. In 18. Great. Thank you, Roxanne. Thank you, Roxanne. You're welcome. Best wishes in your race. Thank you, sir. Is there. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm uh, State Senator elect Zach Walls, and uh, it's a real privilege to be here with you all tonight. I know I was here uh, several months ago back during the, the primary election, and I'm uh, really humbled to, to be succeeding Senator Bob Dvorsky in the Iowa State Senate. I'm very grateful to the city of Coralville, uh, which overwhelmingly supported my candidacy. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to representing the community uh, in the Iowa Senate. Um, as always, uh, I'll be working closely with uh, City Administrator Kelly Hayworth, uh, the mayor, and I'm happy to work with the council on any issues that are, that are appropriate. Uh, I'll be listening and trying to work with the, the lobbying team in, in Des Moines. Um, if any of you ever have any questions directly for me, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, I very much uh, look forward to working with you, and I'm really excited to have this opportunity. So I just want to say thank you all uh, very much, and I look forward to, to working with you in the years to come. Right. Zach, I don't think you mentioned, where do you live? Uh, the Iowa River Landing. Uh -huh. <laughs> Where's that? In Carver. <laughs> so, so, uh, thank you, Zach. We look forward to having you represent, represent us. Anyone else like to speak to us tonight? Mayor, I would just like to introduce um, a scout that's yeah, here from um, Chase Bope. He is um, a scout um, from the, from our troop, and he is working on his communications merit badge and citizenship in the community merit badge. And by attending a public meeting like this, he'll have credit towards both of those. So he'll be actually completing his communications merit badge by attending tonight. Does communication means he has to speak to us? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is I not one of the requirements. From us. <laughs> and Chase, Good to have you tonight. Yeah, Chase and Saint, uh, State Senator Walls is a former Eagle Scout scout himself, so that's kind of a cool little little connection there. Nice. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyone else like to speak? Okay, we're going to move on then I, to item five, uh, vacation of right-of-way. Uh, this is a public hearing on a uh, right-of-way that was part of a property exchange with James and Susan Collins and vacates the portion of the excess First Avenue right-of-way that was conveyed to them. 
I'd like to open the public hearing and ask if there are any comments. Are there any written? No written. Okay, seeing and hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Consider the resolution. Resolution vacating that portion of excess First Avenue right of way described as auditor's parcel 2017034. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Foster, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Gill. Discussion. Yeah, this will just complete um, our agreement of property exchange with um, Jim and Sue Collins that um, actually occurred about 10 years ago, and this is one step that didn't get done at that time. Okay, very good. Roll call. Gross. Aye. Gil. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I, I'm having trouble hearing out of this ear. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll go faster next time I catch you. I have an ear infection. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> so I jumped the gun a little bit on that. But in any case, it passes all eyes. <laughs> Item six is a portion of Outlot B, Coral Crossing, third edition. This is a, uh, we'll start with a building re department report and PNZ report from Jim Kessler, our building official. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is a request by <clears throat> Encompass Healthcare Real Estate LLC for council approval of a rezoning from a CP81 to a CP82, preliminary and final plats for a portion of Outlaw B Coral Crossing's third edition. So what you see up on the screen now is the rezoning exhibit. So this is Outlaw B, Coral Crossing's third edition. This is this area here. So to put this in a location that's familiar to you, this is Coral Court, Oakdale Boulevard, coming off of Coral Ridge Avenue to the west, and Jones Boulevard. This is a new roundabout, and then Jones Boulevard going to the south. So this is at the intersection of those, those three uh, streets and boulevards. So what they're asking for is to rezone just a portion of Outlaw B uh, of Coral Crossing's third edition. So we're rezoning this portion of Outlaw B right here. And then if we go on, it's going to be a little more clear as we look at the next portion. So this is the preliminary plat after the rezoning. It's zoned right now as a CPUD1. And since this is going to be a, uh, a development, a one lot development, we're rezoning it to a CPUD2. And then in the future, we'll be looking at a CPUD, CPUDB site plan for the uh, actual construction on the lot. But now we're just rezoning it and doing the preliminary plat. So it's being preliminary platted into lot one and then a future outlot A for future development. Now outlot A is a pretty good sized lot. It's about eight acres in size. So there's plenty of future room for development here. So we're looking at this preliminary plat tonight. All of the uh, public improvements are already in. There's public improvements along North Coral. There's public <coughs> improvements along Oakdale Boulevard. So all the public improvements are uh, already there for the lot to tie on to. So that's the preliminary plat, and then we're just looking at the final plat. <clears throat> so this was on PNZ the other night for uh, review and approval, and they recommended it be approved by a six to zero vote. Thank you, Jim. Yes. I'd like next to open a public hearing on, on this proposed rezoning. Um, <clears throat> are there any comments from anyone in the audience? Yes. Okay, my name is Serena Davis. I'm here as a representative from Encompass Health, and I have brought some materials for you guys to review just to kind of show you what it is that we do at Encompass Health. Um, basically, we are the leading national provider for rehabilitation services, and um, we provide post-acute care to those um, who have suffered from a stroke or a neurological event. We teach those people how to walk again, how to talk again, how to swallow their food again. And so I just wanted to kind of share those materials with sure. you. Kelly, is this one of the businesses that came from the vote that, or the? Yeah, um, Encompass yeah. Health did receive their certificate of need approval um, by the state in Thanks, October. Thank nice you. to meet you. Say hello to Melanie. Thank We're glad you're coming. Thank you. Thank you. We can share. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Are there any other comments during the public hearing? Any written? No written. Okay. I'll close the public hearing and consider the first reading of the ordinance. Ordinance number 2018-1021, an ordinance amending the Coralville Zoning Ordinance, the same being ordinance number 664. As previously amended, rezoning certain property located within the corporate limits of the city of Coralville, Johnson County, Iowa, and generally known as a portion of Outlot B, 
Coral Crossing 3rd Edition from CPUD 1 Commercial Plan Unit Development 1 District to CPUD 2 Commercial Plan Unit Development 2 District is introduced for adoption first consideration by Council Member Gross, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Goodrich. Discussion? Roll call. Gill. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Gross. Aye. Ordinance passes its first consideration, all ayes. Okay, item seven is lots two and three, Coral Galleria, part three. Again, we'll have a building department report and PNZ report, please. Thanks again, Mr. Barrett. <coughs> this is an amendment to uh, Coral Galleria lots one, two, and three, which we have uh, actually looked at before. Actually, this is the second amendment for this area. Uh, and the reason for this amendment is that uh, they've actually increased the size of lot number three <clears throat> thereby changing, of course, the, the size and the position of lot number two and lot number one as well. So we have to look at an amendment to uh, all three of those lots. And then after we've looked at the amendment for uh, all three of those lots, then we can look at the site plan. So we're amending the preliminary plat and the final plat. This is, that was a preliminary plat you were looking at before. This is the final plat. So <clears throat> Then we're looking at just a PUDB site plan for lots two and three. So this is actually the railroad tracks, second street out here, 25th Avenue coming down here. So this is going to be developed lot number one, and, or I'm sorry, lots two and three, not one, but lots two and three. Lot three and lot number two will be developed as multi-tenant commercial buildings, as you can see on the, on the uh, PUDB site plan here. There'll be one access point off of James Street here. There'll be another shared access point uh, for these two lots off of James Street at this point and also for uh, lot number one. But as we look at the whole picture in the future with lot number one developing, this whole thing will have cross access easements and parking, parking uh, easements on it so that the whole thing will function as one as far as traffic circulation goes. There is no access on the east side of this. We're not allowing any access there. Uh, the future use, proposed use for this is restaurants, retail, lounges, so it's all commercial uses. Uh, I believe, I'm not aware of any particular uses that they have for any of these buildings at this point in time. <coughs> but as you can see, uh, it, with this, with this shared access, there is certainly good traffic circulation throughout all of this. The covenances that we originally, a few years back, passed for Coral Gallery when it first came to us are still in force, and that handles all the building materials and it handles all the building design. So everything that uh, comes in this subdivision will basically be of the same building, well, be of the same building materials and the same design, and the building materials are split up into primary building materials and secondary building materials. And this uh, request certainly follows uh, all of those criteria. This is just kind of a landscaping plan for the area for just the lots two and three. This is a building design. So this is a building design that you will see on lot two and three, as well as the lot number one, which will be a, a much larger multi-tenant building. But as you can see, uh, the roof line is, is uh, broken up with high, you know, different height parapets. Uh, the building materials will all be the same. There'll be a combination of brick and stone, and there'll be some uh, there'll be some very secondary metal accents to it, and there'll be some uh, some siding as well, some uh, pre-manufactured siding possibly as well. Uh, could also be some EFAS on them, but it's a it's a secondary material, so there'll be very little EFAS on them. And then one thing we've worked with them at, and this is kind of an example of a berm that we're going to have along James Street. Uh, these buildings actually, the front of these buildings, most of these buildings face to the north. So they're going to face Highway 6 and the railroad tracks. So the working parts of these buildings, like the loading docks and the dumpster enclosures and everything, are going to be on the south of the building. So they're actually going to face James Street, which is going to be a fairly well-traveled street and actually the main entrance for this development. So we worked with them to build a higher berm along the back and put trees and shrubs along the back of the berm to shield the, the loading docks and to shield the uh, dumpster enclosures and, and the, kind of the workings of the back of the building. And then it's, I think I have another, maybe I do not. 
I guess I don't. Um, there will also be, as you can see here, these are actually limestock or limestone outcroppings that will be part of this berm as well. This berm we will take around the corner and, and we'll continue up along 25th Avenue to shield that as well. So this also was on the uh, last PNZ meeting and reviewed and recommended for approval by the commission by a six to zero vote. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Good job working with the developer mm -hmm. on this. I'd like to open the public hearing on this amended PUD. Are there any comments from the audience? Any written? No written. Okay. I will close the public hearing and consider the resolution on the prelim preliminary plat. Resolution approving the amended preliminary plat for Coral Gallerina Part 3, Coralville, Iowa. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Gill, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Dodds. Discussion? Jim, who, who maintains the right of way of the railroad? The railroad, the railroad does the that. The railroad would be responsible. Now, is that going to just be rock? Pardon me. Will it be rock up to the? Uh, it won't be rock up to here. There'll, there's a there's a ditch in there that'll be grass, but it'll be rock along the tracks, of course. So and then there'll be, be grass. Hmm. But do they maintain a grass approach to it? Yeah. They okay. Do. How well I, I don't know. But okay. They do maintain it. We don't. Any other comments? Roll call. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Gross. Aye. Kill. Aye. Uh, preliminary plat has approved all ayes. Item E is uh, the final plat on the same project. Resolution approving the final plat for Coral Gallerina Part 3, Coralville, mm -hmm. Iowa. Introduced and adopted by Councilmember Dodds. Seconded by. Second. Seconded by Goodrich. Discussion. Roll call. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Gross. Aye. Kill. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Final plat is approved all eyes. And last item on this uh, project is the uh, amended PUD. Resolution approving the amended PUD A and PUD B site plans for lots two and three, Coral Gallerina Part Three, Coral Iowa. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Goodrich, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Foster. Discussion? Roll call. Foster. Aye. Gross. Aye. Gill. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Resolution passes all eyes. Item eight is an easement agreement. And this is for an electrical easement with the Lynn County REC along the eastern portion of the Corville Youth Sports Complex to allow the moving of the electrical lines along 12th Avenue underground. Uh, Don? Resolution approving an easement agreement with Lynn County REC is introduced for adoption by Council Member Foster, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Gill. Discussion? Roll call. Gross. Aye. Gill. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Resolution has approved all ayes. Item nine is an engineering services agreement. Uh, this will be with Terracon Consultants for materials testing related to the First Avenue Improvements Project. Resolution approving an agreement with Terracon Consultants Inc. for materials testing services for First Avenue Improvements, 6th Street to 9th Street. Introduced for adoption of Council Member Gross, seconded by. Second. Second by Dodds. Discussion? Roll call. Gill. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Gross. Aye. Uh, resolutions approved all ayes. Item 10 is the annual urban renewal port report. This is required by the state to formally approve by motion the filing of this report with the Iowa Department of Management. So I'd earn, I would entertain a motion approving and accepting the annual urban renewal report fiscal year 2018. So moved. Moved by Gill, seconded by? Second. By Goodrich. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Tony, get that report filed. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, item 11 is the Mall and Highway 6 Urban Renewal Area. Again, this is one of those filings that's, that's required uh, by the state. And I'll let Don read it. <laughs> <laughs> an ordinance, excuse me, ordinance number 2018-1020, an ordinance amending ordinances number 650, 679, 97-786, 2001-942, 2002-9521, 2013-1015, 2015-1018, 2016-1020, and 2017-1016, 
providing that general property tax is levied and collected each year on all property located within the mall and highway 6 urban renewal project area in the city of Coralville, County of Johnson, State of Iowa, by and for the benefit of the State of Iowa, Iowa City and Coralville County of Johnson, Iowa City Community School District and other taxing districts be paid to a special fund for payment of principal and interest on loans and monies advanced to and indebtedness including bond issues or to be issued incurred by said city in connection with said urban renewal redevelopment project is introduced for adoption. Second consideration by Council Member Gill, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Gross. <clears throat> Questions, discussion? Roll call. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Gross. Aye. Gill. Aye. Okay, the ordinance passes at second consideration, all ayes. I, uh, item 12 is a much more interesting project. It's the Iowa Arena project. And this is a resolution that uh, authorizes um, uh, limited authorization to perform. It's uh, uh, with M.A. Mortensen Construction Company, our contractor on the project. Basically, it's for the uh, construction and, and, and admin, construction administration for the pre-engineered metal building for off-site storage, material handling, and trucking of the materials for the steel that will be soon being erected on site. <laughs> Resolution approving limited authorization to perform number eight with M.A. Mortensen Company is introduced for adoption by Councilmember Dodd, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Goodrich. Discussion. Anything more you want to say about that, Kelly? No. Okay. Roll call. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Gross. Aye. Gill. Aye. Dodds. Aye. The resolution is approved all ayes. Item 13 is 10th Avenue place patching and cutoff walls. This is just a motion to approve change order number one and pay estimate number one final to Carter and Associates for this project. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved Second. by Dodd, seconded by Second. Gill. Yeah. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the motion passes all ayes. Same project as a resolution, Don. Resolution accepting the 10th Avenue place patching and cutoff walls as completed. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Goodrich, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Gross. Discussion. Roll call. Foster. Aye. Gross. Aye. Gill. Aye. Dodd. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Resolution passes all ayes. Item 14 is property acquisition. This is a resolution that allows the city administration to formally acquire the property interest necessary for this project. Um, it's a stormwater on the dry side of the flood berm from Riverview property would be conveyed to the west. So it's a flood related um, property acquisition. Resolution authorizing the acquisition of property interest for the Old Town Stormwater Improvement Project. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Foster, seconded by. Second. Seconded Second by Gill. Discussion. <clears throat> I just wondered if we were purchasing the in entire area or if it's just a portion. It's an easement. One easement. An easement. easement. Okay. For a storm sewer. Okay. That's what I thought. I wanted to clarify. Yeah, very good. Roll call. Gross. Aye. Gill. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Passes all ayes. I would consider a motion to approve the consent calendar as presented or amended. Move the, to approve the consent calendar items A through X inclusive. Second. Moved by Gill, seconded by Dodds. Any discussion? Roll call. Gill. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Gross. Aye. Uh, the consent calendar is approved all ayes. <laughs> Item 16 is an update we're going to have tonight from Kurt Nelson representing EDC Incorporated. This is an organization that we've been a member of for a number of years now that um, strives to increase the uh, economic development and business opportunities in this area. Thank you very much uh, for your guys' continued support. Um, haven't been down to speak to all of you, as I thought it was new. It was new. Sorry, Kelly gave me the Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that, but, uh, but, uh, so, um, and then Alec Witters with the Higher Learning Technology is here with me today. He'll have a few words to say as part of my presentation. Um, but what I what I just handed out to you is our brochure. In that in the in the uh, pocket in the back are three things: our, our 2017 stakeholder report, um, our 2018 mid-year stakeholder report, and a very specific stakeholder report for 17 and year to date, or program to date for just the city of Coralville, um, so that you'll get a sense for um, how your money has been spent and the return on that. Um, I think, you know, ED, 2018 was, was our 15th year in operation. 
Uh, so we've been around a long time helping entrepreneurs. We've now supported over 1,000 businesses in Iowa. Um, those businesses have generated over a $1.8 billion in new area, uh, new area revenue. They've raised and employed nearly $500 million in capital. At this point in time, created over 2,000 jobs, increased average wages by over $500 million, which is a, you know, right around just shy of $3 billion of overall economic impact in Iowa. Uh, predominantly, if you look at where that is, it's in Lynn and Johnson counties. Uh, and it's just because we're located in the Cedar Rapids area. Um, specific to Coralville, where your funds are invested, I've highlighted in that report two companies. Um, I highlighted Viewpoint Molecular. Viewpoint Molecular, I don't know if you're aware of this one, but we do quite a bit of work in the biotech space just because of where the university is located. And fortunately for you, a lot of that is happens out at the BioVentures Center or at the Tech Center, so it's in your, it's in your community. Viewpoint Molecular is uh, Francis, Dr. Francis Johnson and, and Dr. Michael uh, Schultz, um, and it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a diagnostic and a therapeutic for the treatment and cure of metastatic melanoma. Um, so you probably don't want to know a whole lot of detail about how, the, how it works, but fundamentally it's a radionuclide, radiopharmaceutical product which actually delivers alpha particles to identify and kill metastatic melanoma. And there is no known cure for metastatic melanoma to date. Right? And so what we're doing with them is helping them with the entire business side. They've got the science side covered, but the whole business side of making a real business out of it and actually raising outside capital from investors is something that's completely foreign to them. So we're very, very involved with them in doing that right now. Um, and we've done that for others uh, on the medical side up there. Uh, and so I also would say to you that uh, uh, something very different is, is the work that we've done over the years with Alec Witters and Higher Learning Technologies. So I thought I'd let Alec just tell you a little bit about how their business is going and what we may have done for them over time. And then I'll finish up. We're all yours under an hour, Alec. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Hey, Alex. As I... Uh, well, first of all, I'll say that I, uh, I heard that Kurt was coming to talk with you guys, and I thought, hey, th this would be a perfect opportunity for me to go. So this is not a, uh, not a paid endorsement. Um, I'm just grateful for the, the help they've been able to provide over the years to us as a business. So I thought it might make sense just to tell people a little bit about our organization and who we are, what we do. The story, see if I can keep it to three minutes, and then touch on really the, the role that the EDC has played in that. So my, my journey started, I was actually in dental school at the University of Iowa, and I became incredibly frustrated that while taking 30 credits a semester, I was not able to use this device that I used for everything else I did with my life um, you know, to many people's rolling their eyes, you know, it's, it is how I consume information mostly, except for dental school, where 0% of my learning could be consumed that way. So I uh, said about a long journey that I can't do the, the blow by blow of, but basically um, we ended up making a prototype, getting people in it, and through help with the EDC and, and many others, including people in this room, um, that have helped and supported us to actually get that product launched. And I ended up leaving dental school in my seventh out of eight years, which I will say was absolutely horrifying for my family. <laughs> but they, uh, they, they've gotten over it now about five years later. But basically we, we made it so that way students in dental school could study for their licensing exams on their smartphone. And then we did the same thing for nursing. And then we did the same thing for physician's assistant, et cetera, et cetera. And with the help of the EDC and Kurt and I talked, in fact, we were just reminiscing about the role that, that they played in, uh, in helping us. Because when we first met, he was critical of some things that we were doing. And I was almost offended <laughs> by that, being a brash-minded 25-year-old at that time. And it's funny that I look back and I realize like, oh yeah, no, you're right about all those things you said. And that was definitely messages we needed. Um, I, I look at, we did the Innovation Expo early on and that was incredibly 
powerful for us. And to me, it's just sort of a thing that happened. I didn't even think about somebody setting those up or who did it or you know who supported the organizations that did that. But that, that was a, an incredible learning experience for me. And also at that, voted not for us in first place. We got second to, uh, to Telefarm. But then we were able to win you know, a bunch of business competitions in a row after that from the lessons we learned. So as I look back on the early days, there really was this incredible support from the community. You know, th there was others as well, you know, Dick Ferguson from ACT investing in us and, and many, many more people who supported and believed in us. So oh, I'm already going on too long here. So I'm gonna wrap up the where we've been at part. Um, for where we're at now, you know, we're, we're over 50 employees at this point. We've raised 16 plus million dollars. We have 180 apps that we've created that are in our portfolio, working with all the largest publishing companies in the world, Wiley, McGraw, Hill. Um, we, we're making their, their mobile apps and we have over 600,000 items gone through every single day from every country in the world with over 10 million people who've installed our products. And we're incredibly proud to be doing this in Coralville and we're, we're proud to be part of this community and we want to stay here and we really believe that we are just getting started and so b because of the support that i didn't even realize all of you were providing but that actually is coming through to support entrepreneurs like myself when we're in this incubation stage where we could have very easily died in the early days so it's powerful and meaningful <laughs> for the support through the EDC, but, but also through the other channels that many people in this room have supported <coughs> us through. And so we're proud to be here and we hope to be a key member in helping the next generation of entrepreneurs and this city continue to advance. So thank you and I'll Thanks. pass it back to Kurt. Thanks. Thanks thank you. Um, and that's just kind of an example. Uh, if you will, but I thought we were bringing a live one uh, here today. Now, I've provided a number other of examples on the chart that you have there, and then it goes much deeper than that. I think if you if you look uh, going forward um, this year, one uh, another one to be really excited about is Anovis Technologies, and I don't know if and anybody here know even what Anovis Technologies is, but they're they're located out at the Tick Center. But uh, it's a business that I think will grow from about a million dollars this year to somewhere around thirty or forty million dollars in revenue over the next five years, and they're in the industrial. Um, uh, Best way to describe it is the air, air conditioning, large <coughs> HVAC chiller systems. They're in the in the cooling uh, cooling management and cleaning uh, high technology cleaning uh, applications, right? Um, so it's a really exciting business, and you will have it located right here in your community. And we're very involved with them right now. Now I've given you some very specific Coralville stats. So on the back, so capital raised and deployed. You know, like so last year in 2017, <coughs> there was about 10 million dollars raised and deployed. Um, so you've got about eight million dollars on the private side, and most of that was uh, Alec and Higher Learning Technologies, and you've got 2.3 million dollars on the on the public side, and also that was all SBIR, and that was and that was uh, Viewpoint Molecular. Um, but you can see over time, you know, you've got uh, program to date over 55 million dollars, 41 million of it's private. Um, and the thing to keep in mind is is that the private public ratio is very high on the on the private side right so that's a lot of equity dollars um, that are getting raised right and then that and that's a testament to the to put these entrepreneurs and with our help putting together business models that attract investors um, you know you've got increased business revenue and this is the and this is cumulative growth in revenue for the companies that we're assisting the plus for you for an increased revenue for every company is increased revenue is increased money coming to your community from all around the world Right, and that money then, as you know, trickles through your entire economy here. New jobs created, we've got average wage. The interesting thing about average wage is, is that our average wage across the entire state is right around $49,000. If you look on yours, yours is $68,000 for last year, 58 in, to in total. It's because of the type of jobs that are getting created for the businesses that we're supporting. They're all high dollar jobs, okay, which is another real advantage to the city of Coralville. New payroll that's been paid over time and increases. New businesses started in total impact. So you can kind of get a sense for last year, you had about $16 million worth of total uh, impact for the $20,000 that you supported us with. 
right? And you've got about $240 million of, of, of lifetime impact. Um, uh, we've got listed there all the different networking and programs that we do in and around your community. And we also highlighted the Innovation Expo, which we hold in your community every other year. Um, the very first one was actually held here. Um, the, the, the plus you have there is you have one of the only, one of the two venues that are large enough to have that event, right? And so, and that will continue in the, in the future. Um, so just as a recap, you know, you, you get, when you invest in us, what you get in, in, in the form of businesses like Alex is the creation and growth of high impact interstate commerce businesses in your community that bring talent and money to this community, right? You get a unique methodology that we have now refined over 15 years to make that happen. We don't duplicate any of the services of any of the other organizations in the area. We've got a growing number of, number of locally, uh, you know, successfully locally owned businesses. I will point out, and I point out to every city this, is that you all have businesses in your community that we don't support that are legacy businesses that might be five years old or 80 years old. If they're interstate commerce, we could be supporting them. You know, we got involved with, uh, you all know Ed Raber from Washington County. Some of you would know him, but, you know, Ed was really diligent every year at getting us to, down to Washington and introducing us to at least two of their core businesses every year. A few years ago, he introduced us to Bazooka Farmstar, you know, which is one of the Stutzman's businesses. And then, you know, they do uh, manure injecting systems. And that was a business that we got involved with. At, at around a $10 million a year business, uh, and with the help on the marketing side that we've helped um, with that this last year, they, at the end of October, they closed, I think, at $32 million. And they're on their way to $50 million. They are hiring like crazy down in that community. They bought another, Stetsman's bought them another building. Um, and they're expanding significantly, and so for, for the colony of Washington and for the city of Washington, it's been a great success story. And that's just because that city and that ED person reached out to us and said, hey, you should meet these people. Could you maybe help this business? Right? So it wasn't one where the business came to us. It was one where the city actually reached out to us and made the connection. So I just offer that up to you as a way for your own city economic development to more closely link us into businesses that you might have that we could help scale. So I just want to thank you for your support on a regular basis. I know you keep us in your budget, but I want to be gracious about that and make sure I give you information. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Great. How did you, you get uh, Kelly Hayworth senior class picture for this uh, <laughs> brochure? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we just use the pictures the people want us to <laughs> use, you know. <laughs> we'll get one to of my, uh, it does note one of the, um, <laughs> one of the favorite activities that they do that I enjoy every year because that's where all these very um, new companies um, are all put in a room and you can see and meet them and the other thing they do is bring a lot of students whether they're high school or college students together with these companies and can learn some of the opportunities that are coming and I think that's one of the best activities if you ever have time um, you can spend as little or as much time as you want, but that's one event yes, that I highly event. recommend you go to every year, and that's typically in October um, or late September, And um, but it's very, very worthwhile. And as Alec noted, he was there at one point. Mm -hmm. I think I've done every year. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else from you all? Do you only specialize in the, in like the, the biotech no, no. Or you, you work with other types of companies Every, It's as well? interstate commerce, um, businesses that can or have scaled past $10 million. So, and we've done everything from, you know, from liquor to baking products to basic manufacturing. So like with Bazooka Farmstar, that's basic manufacturing, right? Cedar Ridge Vineyards, we have oh, yeah. a, well, a lot of time spent with Cedar Ridge Vineyards in their earlier days up there, but mostly on the, the national liquor side of it, not the local winery side of it. Um, so, you know, being in Iowa, you know, we don't have any real specialty here because we, so we've got a lot of diversity. So from, you know, ed tech to med tech to, uh, you know, so we're working um, with higher learning. We're also working strongly with Pear Deck in Iowa City. That's on the, on the ed tech side. Um, so IT side, communication side, basic manufacturing, retail products, breads for mana. We spend a lot of time with the breads for mana product. So Good. all of the above. How many are on your set? There's five of us full time. Um, and then we have about 50 subject matter experts that we've got now attached to the organization. So when we meet very specific expertises out of specific market segments, we have them. Now after 15 years, we've developed a real roster of expertise across the state of Iowa. 
Um, so we don't come up short no matter what the no matter what the opportunity is with the entrepreneur. We work with about 40 companies at any one time. I think we have 38 right now that we're working with actively. Great. Well, thank you, Kurt. All right. Thank this. you all for having us yep. and for your support. You bet. We'll, we'll excuse Alec, ourselves. Thank you for coming, too. Yep. Yeah, thanks, thank you. <clears throat> okay. We'll move on to um, City Engineer Road <laughs> Reconstruction Report. Scott Larson. All right. Thank you, Mayor. I will keep this uh, simple and focused. So I'll start with the First Avenue project, and I'm just going to go over what exactly we're trying to accomplish uh, before the end of the year. Uh, <coughs> actually, before the end of this month or, or in the next couple of weeks. So on First Avenue, um, the number one priority is completing the west side sidewalk. We have two small sections of sidewalk near the Days Inn that are not poured back yet. We are pushing hard to get those poured back. Uh, there is an opportunity Thursday and Friday of this week, possibly into the weekend, where the temperatures uh, may work out to get that done. We are pushing uh, daily on that. And the reason that's important is um, it will eliminate that short stretch where pedestrians are actually put out into the street pavement, protected by concrete barriers. But you know, there, we need to get everybody onto the sidewalk, open up the full lanes. Uh, second priority is going into the winter, we need to provide temporary sidewalks to both Arby's and Super 8. Um, that may consist of very thin temporary concrete that will have to be torn out and replaced in the spring. It could consist of a compacted gravel surface. Either way, it has to be uh, traversable to all pedestrians. So we're pushing hard to get that completed. And um, the big unknown, even um, <coughs> going into this afternoon, are the northbound and southbound left turn lanes at 6th Street. Um, as you drive through there, that's kind of the piece that still has cones around it. It's, you know, it's just kind of a hole in the ground on either side of the railroad crossing there. And um, there, it's, it's complicated. Um, to, to get those built requires putting traffic, northbound traffic, over on the new northbound lanes. Um, those aren't quite ready <laughs> to put traffic over there yet. Uh, so we're looking at a couple of different scenarios where um, you know, maybe we keep the northbound left turn where it is and make use of the temporary signals through winter, even though at the end of this week, we actually expect the permanent signal poles and mast arms to arrive. And the contractor fully intends to start installing those signals at First Avenue and 6th Street as soon as possible. The question remains is if, how we can make use of those or if we still have to, to use the temporary signals going through winter. Uh, so we are working through those scenarios um, every day now. And then finally on First Avenue, um, we will be doing some temporary paint markings because obviously it'd be great to get two lanes in each direction, but right now we don't have any pavement markings. We have pylons. We have nothing on the new northbound lanes yet, partially because of the snow. Um, so we will be looking to get temporary pavement markings down that will then be redone next spring with permanent uh, pavement marking material. So that's the, the four bullet points for First Avenue. Are there any questions about First Avenue specifically? So the, <clears throat> the issue with the 6th Street signals, um, if the scenario is that we have to leave the, the temporary signals up, does that mean that at that pinch, will there be a pinch point there of going back to just one lane in each direction? Or The one possibility is that we would face a situation where southbound would remain one lane and northbound, uh, right now where you have the northbound through that then flares out to the northbound left and the northbound through movements, mm -hmm. there just isn't three lanes to work with there. So in the one scenario is we would just um, keep southbound in the one lane that it is in currently and um, still have that northbound left, but then we would push the, the two northbound lanes of First Avenue over onto the new pavement. So there'd be quite a separation um, at 6th Street between the, the left turn and the through movement. So that's one scenario. Okay. So we're supposed to have a warm winter and we're not to winter yet. So no, okay. Good. there's still a glimmer of hope that maybe we could do more paving if the weather cooperates. So, all right. So Coral Ridge Avenue. Um, had further communication today. We are told that the final 
small section of mainline paving up at Forever Green Road will be poured Friday. So that means um, mid to late next week that concrete would be cured out and that will mean that we have uh, two lanes northbound and two lanes southbound that we could open up uh, to traffic going into winter. So we're very close on, on meeting that goal. Um, one question mark up at Forever Green, the northbound left turn lane onto Forever Green Road is not poured yet. It has blankets on it, attempting to keep the ground warm enough to potentially pave it uh, yet this week or, or next week. So we're monitoring that on a daily basis to see if that could get poured. Um, if not, we would still have the ability to make left turns there. It would just be that you would be turning left from one of the through lanes, not, not an ideal scenario. Um, later this week, early next week, the contractor will be putting down the temporary pavement markings all up and down Coral Ridge Avenue and getting rid of the, the pylons. As you've probably driven through the Oakdale Boulevard intersection, lots of pylons and such. We are really anxious to see those go away. Um, it makes it easier to plow <laughs> when you don't have all those pylons and barrels in the roadway. So hopefully that will be done early next week. And one thing we're trying to determine is if we can get the west leg of University Parkway open. It's partially connected to Coleridge Avenue, but it's not completely done yet. Um, and that would, you know, if we can get that done, that would provide uh, the IMCC its secondary access back. And that would be actually at a new signalized intersection because those signals at University Parkway are ready to go. So we're pushing to make that connection as well. Um, going through winter, we fully expect that the east leg of University Parkway between Coleridge Avenue and Cross Park Road will remain closed. And we also anticipate keeping Wheaton Road completely closed as well to the north. So, um, but our, you know, our main goal again goes back to trying to get two lanes north, two lanes south, and turn lanes wherever possible. So that's all I had for Coral Ridge Avenue. Any questions on Coral Ridge Avenue? Okay. And then the last thing I wanted to mention, I sent out a press release, um, I guess that was just yesterday, that I just wanted to remind everybody that tomorrow from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., Coral Ridge Avenue will be closed immediately south of Highway 6, between Highway 6 and James Street, because the railroad has to replace uh, a rail line um, in the railroad crossing there. So traffic will detour over to 25th Avenue and James Street to reach those businesses that are on Coleridge Avenue south of Highway 6. But that's just for one day. Is doing that at night not a possibility for the railroad? Or? It's, they don't like to work at night because of the additional uh, hazards that exist uh, during that time. So. Um, so we, you know, we usually allow them to work during the day. And uh, the best part is we actually pay for the repair. So. Do you have any quick report on the two um, stormwater uh, projects that are going on in, near my home? The old Hickory Lane storm sewer project is progressing very slowly, uh, frustratingly so. Um, starting on the other project is currently nowhere in sight. Hmm. partially due to the weather, partially due to progress on the Old Hickory Lane storm sewer project. So we are forging ahead as, as much as we can on that project. So Very good. Thank you, Scott. Okay, Thanks, thank Scott. you. What else do you have to tell us, City Administrator Kelly? Well, first of all, I'd just like to um, thank the mayor for his promise that he's got the weather under control and we're going to get all this paving done. So, sure. yeah, no thanks problem. for that um, yeah. <laughs> and all that effort there. I um, would just like to remind people as we go into the holidays, December 8th um, and 9th are all the luminary activities in 
um, Coralville, and there's um, activities all um, throughout the community at Coral Ridge Mall, down at um, the Iowa River Landing, here at City Hall, um, the Coralville Methodist Church, every, um, lots of locations. So encourage people to um, go to coralville.org and see all of the different activities that will be held over those um, two dates. It's a fun time to get out and enjoy the outside weather. Um, just once again, would like to um, thank um, Chase for coming tonight. Um, Chase is one of those um, amazing students that we have in, in the Iowa City School Districts, and Chase is uh, very involved in school and volunteering and scouting and um, is a great athlete as well. So he's got a lot of different areas covered, and so um, thank him for coming tonight. And that's it. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. <clears throat> Mayor's report. Um, I just want to remind folks that live in Coralville that due to last week's holiday, garbage collection this week is a day late. So today, Tuesday, Monday's uh, area was picked up. Tomorrow will be Tuesday's areas and so forth. So a day late all the way through Friday. So <clears throat> if you can try and remember that and tell your neighbors too if you see them. Um, it's hard to get used to that change in routine, but um, it is what it is. Uh, second thing I wanted to mention was, speaking of snow, and just the annual reminder that there is a requirement in this community that, that you get out and clean your sidewalks. And uh, I was amazed at that. I thought this, granted it wasn't real deep, but there was enough that it needed to be cleaned. And I thought the city, generally the community did a really good job of being out there. Um, one person I'm going to, or area I'm going to ding, um, is on Holiday Road um, at Bridgewater. They plowed in front of Urban Acres and their investment building, and of course lensing from the other side, but that section of sidewalk where there's no development yet that we've, we've talked about, that remained un, untouched. So if, if we could get uh, that done, that would be great. And uh, finally, just the, with the holiday season at the Center for, um, Corville Center for Performing Arts, the CCPA, there's a tremendous number of really great holiday events coming up. Um, almost every day there. So just take a look on, on the website and you can find some great things to go to there. City Attorney Report. Well, any of you that were concerned about my Thanksgiving dinner, I had plenty to eat, so uh, <laughs> Kevin. I had nothing. Okay, thank you. Committee and Council Members Report. Can you hear me, Megan? Kind of. I'm afraid <laughs> that I'm going to be yelling into the microphone. <laughs> Um, I really don't have very much. I just want to remind people that today is Giving Tuesday. So if you um, have a uh, charity or organization or cause that is near and dear to your heart, I highly encourage folks to um, do some giving today. And um, just wanted to let people know that Ray Gun, the Coralville Ray Gun shirts uh -huh. are ready to be viewed and there are four designs and um, they're all pretty funny and uh, I, I'm really glad that we finally have some fun ones to pick from. There's one that has a design with the roundabout uh -huh. on it that's really, really kind of interesting. Oh, great. So my favorite one is the one about the coral reefs. If you came for the coral reefs, you're 300 million years too late. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's all I have. Thank That's you. good. Thank you. Mitch? Well, I'll start off with a funny one. My, mine's probably Corville Home of North Liberty's High V. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, Kelly, on maybe Scott, I should ask you too. Did the snow impact, like uh, snow removal on the, on First Avenue? Were they able to? Yeah, they were able to cover that. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I just, I mean, I've been on here for 11 years. This seems like the most goofed up construction project I can remember us having, like just as far as delays and this or that. And I just hate that, you know, businesses on the holiday season, and I, mean, I know it's beyond anyone's control, but it's just, it's a level of frustration. Oh, so. we've had worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I think the one issue to remember is we've also had very weird weather for oh, I know, the, I know. the whole year, <laughs> and that hasn't That's helped either. Years. Yeah. <clears throat> That's all. That's all? Okay. Thank you, Mitch. Yep. Tom. Well, with the snow, my adopted hydrant got cleaned off. Good. And I'm Good. letting everybody know that if you want to adopt a hydrant, Good. contact the Coralville uh, Fire Department. And you can clean that hydrant off. It's a it's a good it's a good thing to do because uh, you know the with the with the cold weather, there's always a chance of fire. So yeah, <clears throat> that's all I have. Thank you, Jill. Yeah, I actually have a couple of things. Um, 
First, uh, <coughs> Burfest tickets went on sale yesterday at 0900. I was ready to go and got them for all the kids for Christmas. So they're, they're happy. Too, right? Are they sold out now? The, you know? um, brewmasters. the, the brewmasters. brewmasters sold out in one half hour. So um, there's still tickets available for I the general them. time period. <laughs> and um, so we do have um, some of those, but they've sold over 1,000 tickets already. Excellent. Um, the second thing uh, for not only the community but for the counselors because I think this is going to be for your approval on our next meeting um, from the Parks and Rec Department. We got a re uh, grant for the and we're calling it the Coralville Woodland Restoration Project and this <coughs> is the first time we've done this in Coralville but what this is going to pay for is the mechanical removal of invasive species in various project areas in the city and then the replanting um, for the native species. So there's 132 acres in I believe like five or six different areas that this is going to happen on. So it's a very interesting project Good. and uh, we're kind of excited about it. And so um, we've already got bids and we had a whole lot of interested people bid on the project. So that will come before you for your uh, perusal and approval on the next meeting. Um, the other thing, um, if you will remember, we renamed the Dvorsky Trail. Mm -hmm. And so there, um, the stone that has the name on it has been placed. And for those who are looking for it, it goes from 5th Street, 7th Street, kind of like by Old Town Hall, and then along Biscuit Creek, and then comes up by their old house. So it's kind of interesting because it's kind of like from their new house to their old house now. So um, if you want to take a look at that trail, uh, the stone is up. So that's all I have. <coughs> Thank you. Lori. Uh, the Coralville Connection came to all of our homes, all of our residents in Coralville received this just before Thanksgiving. Just want to, everything that we talked about tonight is in this um, nice brochure. want to thank like the staff so much for um, putting this out and just want to remind everybody to pick theirs up off the counter or under the table or wherever it is and take a look. There's a lot of great information in here. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. With that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Gil, seconded by? Second. Gross. Enthusiastic second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we're adjourned.